What's up? What's up? Mike check one, two, one, two. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Good afternoon. Whatever time you're listening from, wherever you're listening, I appreciate you. Shout out to my Spotify listeners, Apple Podcasts, Audible, Amazon Music, Podchaser, Geo Savan. If you're on Google Podcasts, big shout out if you're on Stitcher and YouTube, if you're watching in. Thanks for giving me a reason to get dressed and invest in these cameras. Coming live from my voice to your phone, computer, headphones, TV, car stereo, still no smartwatches, Bluetooth speaker. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here right now. Let's take a moment to be present and recognize that it's now, right now. Whether you're working, running, exercising, cleaning, laying down, flying, driving, doing the dishes, let's be grateful we're alive. Failure can be frightening. However, as Winston Churchill reminds us, success is all about going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. This is I Will Not Lose Podcast. Let's jump right in. Listen, when I do that intro, it's it's very calculated. The reason why I have to remind myself every week about going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm is there's ups and downs, man. And motivation is all about having that feeling you had when you started a year, six months, three months, five years down the road, you know, it's a, it's a constant struggle. So reminding myself why we got into this, the, uh, the fact that not everything is going to be a banger, not everything is going to come across the greatest. So I appreciate all the feedback, negative and positive. And as I'm sitting here coming up with stories of success for failures for this week, I'm thinking about creativity and I'm thinking, man, you know, I've got some really cool stuff that I would love to drop, but I just don't know that it's ready yet. So I want to take more time, let that incubate. And it got me thinking about creativity in general and specifically creative block. So if you're listening in today, we are, uh, welcome to, I will not lose podcasts where we explore the ups and downs of failure. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking about the times where you're feeling stuck and can't come up with any new ideas. We'll be discussing some strategies for overcoming creative blocks, finding some inspiration where it's nowhere to be found. We're going to be going through some stories of companies and how, look, if you're feeling down with creativity personally, just know there's companies that invest tens of thousands, if not millions of dollars in innovation. You know, I've done marketing for companies who literally All they do is create codathons and incubate creativity because companies have such a hard time nailing this down. You know, they say uh, pinning creativity to the wall is like pinning jelly. You know, it's a it's a fluid thing. So if we can agree on what creativity is, and this is what I'm going with this podcast based off of uh, creativity is the ability to come up with new and original ideas. It's the process of taking something that already exists and transforming it into something new or unique. This can be applied into many areas like art, science, music, design, writing, photography, even podcasting. So everybody wants to get good at it. And in the light of things like AI being able to do the tedious process of creating, if you want to call it creation, you know, don't kill me for calling AI uh, image synthesis, I think they're calling it, you know, maybe that's not creativity, but somebody has to come up with the prompts. And so it's an interesting revolution we're about to move into where creativity comes to the top of the bucket. It comes the most sought out thing because the execution has moved east for a while. Um, A lot of the creative arts, even if you look at Netflix, most of their filming is done in Europe. It's just less than Hollywood prices. You can get things done a lot cheaper, and that's the way the industries are moving. So as a career creative, this is constantly something that I've worked on getting better at, worked on training. So part of this is going to be anecdotal. It's going to be part of my experience. Some of it is going to be things like studies that I've looked at because this is a really interesting topic. So how do we train it? Uh, It's worth noting that creativity is not a fixed trait. It can be nurtured and developed through consistent practice and effort. So the more you create, the more creative you become, in theory. Uh, To train creativity, there are several things that can be used. So I'm going to go into a few of these. One of them is brainstorming. 
And if you've ever been a part of a group brainstorming, um, I've been in different groups of different walks of life with brainstorms. I want to focus specifically on engineers. One of the things with brainstorming, so this technique involves generating as many ideas as possible without judging or censoring them. This is the most important part. If you try to think the entire idea through and think about every way that it can fail, you're never going to get it to the point where somebody else could bounce a perspective off it and say, hey, uh, let's, let's attack it like this. That's how the most creative things are created in groups. But this gets the creative juices flowing. And one thing that engineers are notorious for, and it's what makes them good at their job. So this is not a negative trait, but they have to see what could possibly go wrong. So in a group of creatives, if you have some people who are trained in their mind to look for what can go wrong, the second an idea comes out, it's going to instantly be shut down or, hey, you know, that that's not possible to work. So it's something that I have friends that have struggled with. It's something that I've struggled with. I consider myself very engineer minded, very analytical, even in my art. Everything is a process, but we'll get into that later. So how do we train it? Besides brainstorming, there's incubation, the process of letting an idea simmer in the back of your mind. Sometimes stepping away from the problem can help you get new perspectives and solutions. So I carry around a little cloud notebook. I mean, I do carry a physical pen and paper with me just in case I need to jot something, but from my phone or laptop or anything, I can access this cloud library of my notes. So little things that spark into my head, I'll write them down and just put notes on them as we go. Something comes up, you know, these are, whether it be jokes or stories that I've written, I have so many things saved that may or may not ever be created, but the process of putting it there, analyzing it, thinking about it, this is incubation. This works really well. Uh, when we get further into the science of it, you have to realize that creativity can't be forced. It's not a endurance thing like uh, weightlifting or something where you you know you can keep doing it. Yes, you do build the creative muscle, if you want to call it, but it's far from something you can just cram and do. So even when I have a ton of creative work to do, I split it up into breaks. I don't try to do everything all at once, and I just let it be able to simmer in the back of my mind. Uh, get inspired is another way to train creativity. So look at the work of others in your field. Read books, listen to music, explore other forms of art. Uh, if you guys know me, I'm a huge gamer and it's not like a, um, I'm not gaming all the time. I actually should be gaming more for creativity, but I play games that have stories, I play games that have tons of color, uh, that are technically sound. And it does make me more creative when I'm creating, whether it be a color combination that I see, but, uh, listening to science fiction. So I bounce back and forth from listening to a personal development to listening to stories of science fiction or apocalypse or worlds that I don't exist in. And that's how I keep my creative muscles strong. Um, experimentation. Play around with different techniques and mediums. Try new things, even if they seem a bit crazy. So this is the fun part. Um, when you get further along the creative field, you kind of get a look and a style that people seek out and they want that look. You run into it with agencies where after a while, agency puts out all work that looks the same. Even if it's beautiful, it's from the same creatives, from the same minds, and they're ro rocking with a template that just works. So... The podcast is an area where I'm able to experiment, try some different things. Um, getting ready to announce season two. Season one was all about experiments, trying different things, new camera angles, um, different audio equipment, just to make sure that we could consistently put this out every week. Um, now that we've got the editing down to a system, we have everything scheduled, we have room for buffer and... Uh, some things that we can put out in case we're not feeling super creative that week. But a big thing is the guests, you know, experimenting with different types of guests. We do have a theme with this podcast of stories created, uh, uh, success learned from failure, but not every piece of content is going to be absolutely stuck to the theme. It just, um, it's great to be a thought experiment and flipping your mind state, but 
as I work to get larger and more notable guests, we're going to have some people that just have a conversation about some things and we'll find ways to work that into the content. So if you've been listening all the way, thank you. If you're new to listening and you're wondering what this is, stick tuned for season two. We are working on putting the processes together a little bit better based on uh, audience feedback. So besides experimentation, what else can we do? Practice. Practice makes perfect. I mean, this goes without saying, but I know um, I'm going to shout her out all the time. Shout out to uh, V Alvarado, tattoo artist out in Austin, Texas. She's constantly posting TikToks of her just practicing art, just putting together uh I don't know tattooing, but I guess it's like paper that acts like skin. It looks like she inks it and does things like this. Super cool to watch on time lapse, but it's about practicing. It's about drilling. It's about practicing the way you would in practice, the way you would in the game. And that gets you really strong and on top of things. Uh, This is a big one that I'm going to spend some time on. Take breaks and take care of yourself. Creativity and productivity can be enhanced by taking care of your physical and mental well-being. So if I don't sleep good, if I don't eat good, if I'm stressed out, if I'm anxious, I don't create very well. Um, There is something to be said for creating when depressed. Um, I think that when your brain is wired in that different sort of way, I mean, even I think comedy, uh, not that it's a dark thing. Comedy is making you laugh, but it forces you to look at things in the opposite way that the normal world does. And that can be very alienating for somebody who is constantly seeking the approval of laughter. So understand that mental health and creativity go so hand in hand. Um, I have been taking care of my mental health for the past couple of years, but really this past year. and. I can't even fathom the amount of stuff that I've put out. I haven't even been able to share it on social. I've been creating at such a high level for quite a long time. So I appreciate it. Um, Appreciate the taking breaks and taking care of yourself. Um, I get worried about if I don't have my hair right or I don't have a haircut or I don't feel good. So As dumb as it sounds, I force myself to do a video version of this podcast. Trust me, it would be way easier to just put the audio out. There would be more content. Uh, The editing of a video and syndicating the content as well to YouTube is a choice that I make because it helps keep me on top of it. It's very easy for me to disappear in a basement, have my hair start growing out, stop shaving, and all of a sudden I become the creative hermit, you know? Um, so having some sort of public face tying myself to things is great. Um, taking care of yourself, make sure that goes, uh, top of your list if you are working on being creative. So in this next segment, I'm just going to flow through some company failures and just kind of paint the picture that, look, this is something that individuals struggle with. Even if you create at a high level, you deal with the, oh man, I'm not good enough. I can't create this. Therefore I suck. You slip into depression. It's it's a terrible cycle, but just know that uh, professional creatives are going through this struggle and they find ways to manage it um, and take breaks, things like this. So companies that just didn't adapt creatively. There's Kodak. They were once the leader in the film and photography industry. Uh, If I ask my kids now, they think of it as a antique thing, Kodak and Polaroid. When digital cameras came along, Canon and Nikon grabbed up the market share. Uh, Kodak said, well, we're catering to the audience of people who deal with film and things like that. And all of a sudden, if you look at the industry now, A lot of those cameras are going on eBay and things like that, but they're not really being sold through uh, B&H or your major retailers, things like that. Um, You have a chain like Blockbuster, leading video rental chain. If you guys remember in the 90s, going to Blockbuster to pick out a rental that you could have for the weekend was like you had your grades good, you went... uh, 
most of the time you didn't return it on time and the company made so much money through late fees. Um, you could take a VHS and rewind over it and return it back. Like it, it's really crazy to try to explain to our kids that this was a successful business, but uh, everybody. And then you had a red box, which allowed you to rent videos and DVDs. Blockbuster had a chance to get into doing like a blue box. I mean, just the brand Blockbuster, they they had licensing and deals. They could have done really well with that. But companies, especially large companies, they have short-sighted deadlines. They have quarters to grow. Innovation may take time. It may take resources. And it's just difficult to have those things. But there's tons of companies. You have Sears, largest retailer. You don't hear about them anymore. Um, Toys R Us, leader in the toy retail industry, but you just couldn't buy anything online. And online shopping put Toys R Us out of business. So not only does companies need to remain creative and innovative to stay in the global market, but individuals need to stay creative. You know, your job changes. If you're not taking continuing education or learning new skills, or you don't have a mentor that you're working with, you can find yourself stagnant and you can find yourself just doing the same thing. So when somebody comes along with a way to do it 20 times faster and you didn't adapt to that, you may uh, suffer a, a terrible fate. So Tips to make yourself more creative. I wanted to touch on this real quick, but a lot of people think pot and creativity are linked. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I hope I cited my source here in the notes. Um, nope, I'll have to punch that in later. If not, but this is from a study. The summary is, as more and more countries and states legalize recreational marijuana use, organizations may increasingly find themselves tasked with understanding and addressing the impact of weed in the workplace. In particular, many celebrities have suggested that cannabis has aided their creative pursuits. But the author's recent research suggests that while weed can make you think your ideas are more creative, it doesn't have any impact on your ability to come up with objectively creative ideas. As such, the art... art uh, as such, the author argues that at least when it comes to the role that requires clear-eyed evaluation of creative options, organizations may stand to benefit from implementing policies that respect personal freedom while encouraging employees to stay sober. <laughs> so don't think you're going to smoke and be more creative or vape or ingest or any of the many ways. Uh, you may be more jovial. You may have more fun while painting or writing and creating, but no researches, uh, no studies suggest that it actually makes you objectively more creative. So to summarize, creativity is not something that can be nailed against the wall and mass produced and manufactured. It requires a lot of rest. It requires a lot of practice. Hopefully you found this podcast either entertaining or informative, hopefully both, in ways to come up, be more creative, not hit creative blocks, and not suffer the fate of Blockbuster, Kodak, Blackberry, Toys R Us, the long list of companies that fail to be innovative, creative, and keep up with the times. This is I Will Not Lose Podcast, Stories of Success Learned from Failure. To support the show, visit the website, shows.acast.com slash I Will Not Lose, and subscribe to your favorite podcast player. Share this episode link, leave a comment. Your contribution is appreciated. Thank you for listening. 